What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that all of you are having an amazing day. It's a beautiful Monday, and we are recapping the fifth episode of Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. So it picks up right where it left off, ending in episode four, where Bria and Silas were pretty much going at it over Bria's boyfriend, Simon, trying to come and visit the house from Germany. So Bria... You know, the producers cut to where Bria brought it up to Simon and, um, or Silas and Jasmine, that her boyfriend Simon was coming from Germany to spend the last week with them in the house. So at the bowling alley, like, they didn't seem to have a problem with it. Preston standing right there beside her, kind of nodding his head. And, you know, they seemed really cool with it. So cut to the end of episode four. Silas whispers to Jasmine, you know, in their pillow talk or whatever, he's like, well, you know, did we say that, did we approve that he could stay the whole week? Simon is controlling, man. I know he said that, you know, Bria manipulates everybody and, you know, she's manipulative, but Simon is, or Simon, I keep saying Simon, I'm sorry. Silas is extremely controlling, not just of Jasmine, his wife, but he tries to control pretty much everybody in the house and Bria calls him out. So she gets really upset and that's where episode five opens. They're doing the toga party. So they're, you know, dressed in their like white um, bed sheets. But she basically, you know, is yelling at him, saying that he's really controlling and, you know, he's going back and forth, calling her manipulative and she gets really frustrated. So she takes her bags out of the closet and she's like trying to pack her stuff because she wants to go home. She calls her boyfriend, Simon, who pretty much calms her down and, you know, kind of reassures her that everything will be okay once he gets there. So cut to us being introduced to Summer, who is a new uh, castmate of the house. So she knows Jasmine and Jordan and Jordan interviewed her for a Playboy article way back when they were all bunnies and working for Playboy. And Summer comes in and Alex, you know, her and Alex immediately have that, um, you know, attraction to each other. Alex says that she's giving, you know, Hillary Banks vibes and she is Jamaican, which I thought was real cool. She is, um, I believe she's biracial. I know her mom is black. I think her, her dad is white, but she said that, you know, growing up, with a Jamaican family, like, you know, she was the lightest one. It reminded me a little bit of Trevor Noah's story, <laughs> story um, where, you know, she she just felt like she stood out from everybody else because she was biracial. But the cool thing about Summer, you know, is that she offers them a taste of her, her culture, right? So she actually hires a chef, which I thought was real cool. And he makes, you know, authentic Jamaican food. So like jerk chicken, rum punch, um, the red beans and rice. I think it's called rice and peas. And uh, some really well-seasoned shrimp. I forget exactly what it, I know, I know they had like jerk chicken, but some well-seasoned shrimp that was really spicy. You know, some people like spicy food, some people don't. I'm, I can, I, I'm like the medium spice like some stuff is real cool i have some friends though that <laughs> they they love spicy food like they knock it out at the park um but i can do a medium spice but yeah so that was real cool you know they had a chef come and then summer and alex you know they start talking in his room and he's telling her about meditation and you know um they're just getting to know each other which i think is real cool then all the girls and Preston, they go out to celebrate um, Jordan's one year celibacy anniversary. So she's been celibate for one year. And, you know, she's just telling them about her journey and her life with the past relationships that she was in. She said the last one, it wasn't, you know, successful because it was more of a, a situationship. And I'm like, yeah, girl, we've all been there. <laughs> Um, but I really think it's dope that, you know, Jordan is honoring herself and her body and she is just making sure that she is, you know, focusing on her own mental journey, self-care journey and guarding her heart. So 
they, you know, go out to brunch and they toast to one year of Jordan being celibate. And um, then they come back to the house. They play a game of like truth or dare or sh or it's like some kind of spin or, or truth or dare. And that was really fun. They, you know, give each other like lap dances and um I mean, all, obviously, you know, they're all clothed and stuff like that. And then like Nick ends up jumping into the pool and, you know, just like college age type antics, even though they're all like in their 30s, I think. But I think it's, you know, they're just like having fun on the vineyard, playing little silly games. And then um, what else happens? You know, the one thing I wanted to point out that I really lo loved about their whole the whole truth or, or dare game is that the men, especially um, Amir, before he does his little, you know, tease or whatever, he looks at Jordan and he's like consent. Like all the men ask the women for consent, like out loud so we can hear, so they can hear and they all approve them. But I just think that's just so amazing from, you know, where we've come as a culture, you know what I mean? Like I can remember back when I was a kid and I was growing up <laughs> and I'm not that old. Um, it just, it wasn't socially acceptable, I guess, you know, um, for guys to ask girls audibly anyway, you know, um, especially around like other guys for their consent. And so I feel like it's a lot more mainstream. And I actually, I think that, you know, like social media has a lot to do with that, like the Me Too movement and things like that. But I just think that was real cool. Um, so then we actually end up meeting Simon. Bria's boyfriend comes in from Germany. <laughs> and well, even before we meet Simon, Jasmine and Jordan are having a conversation about, you know, Jordan being celibate and her being single. And I think it's interesting that, you know, Jordan said... <laughs> That Jasmine reminds her of a nagging mother, even though they're the same age, you know, like, where your husband at? Where your kids at? And she's like, dang, Ma, can I live? You know? And the crazy thing is, by the end of the episode, Jasmine is crying at the table in front of everybody because she's so unhappy with her life. I thought that was really an interesting tidbit before we meet Simon, who was the last scene um, of the night. But he comes in <laughs> just like this, it reminds me a little bit of Prince Hakeem <laughs> from Zamunda <laughs> because he rolls up, or maybe Prince Harry, I don't know. He rolls up in like this really expensive sports car. I mean, I was like, according to like, he got money, okay? He came and he gave Jasmine and Silas these really expensive Versace watches and pretty much, you know, got the whole house watches. Um, but I think the two Versace ones were specifically for Jasmine and Silas as um, wedding gifts, you know. And then he gives watches to the other members of the house. But these were like really expensive watches, okay. And <laughs> then he brings like a bottle of um, really expensive liquor. I think it was like Casse Azul or something like that. And Silas is all smiles. <laughs> His whole demeanor switched up. I was like, oh my goodness. He was like, yeah, you know, Simon brought this, you know, this bottle. That's a really good start. And then the watches, their eyes just lit up. Like you could actually see the dollar sign in their eyes. Like it reminded me of Looney Tunes <laughs> episode when Bugs Bunny or, you know, one of the characters would come up, you know, across a bag or a lot of money and have those green dollar signs in their eyes. Yep. That was Silas all day. I'm telling you, man, I, <laughs> a lot of people on social media was like, they need to cut Jasmine and Silas because, um, and they were like, you know, have Preston be the host, which Preston was, was mad cool. You know what I mean? Like throughout this whole episode. And I have to agree. I mean, people who are that controlling and domineering are really insecure and they're dangerous. And that's just my opinion. I mean, I don't know Silas personally. I do know that 
Preston put on, you know, Twitter, he wrote out, you know, two things can be true at once. Simon can be controlling and Bria can be manipulative. And Jasmine, you know, his wife, um, she gets in the comments and she's like, so that's your line, brother, right? He's controlling. (laughs) And Preston's like, correct. (laughs) Like, just because they're part of the same fraternity does not negate the fact that Silas is extremely controlling. Jasmine's like, okay, you know, because what else are you going to say? You know, your husband, he is, he's really controlling. And like I said, by the end of the episode, she was breaking down at the table, crying about her life and about the decision that she made. I think it was because she really was regretting marrying um, such a domineering man. That cannot be fun. But anyway, you guys, let me know your thoughts about the episode. I, you know, am definitely enjoying the the cast so far. I think that Summer and Jason make a really great addition. And please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you later. Take care, aces. Bye.